Welcome to the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. This is your most informative social political program that brings you facts and educates you on issues of importance to you. My name is Ismail Akwe, and in this edition, we are going to go back to our religious series where we debunk some misconceptions around religions in Ghana. Today, we are going to discuss the common misconceptions about traditional Ghanaian religion. And there are so many of them. However, we have someone, our guest, who is going to talk about the Ghanaian traditional religion. He is a traditional priest and also a communications professional. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back from the break. This is The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Lakwe, and as I said earlier, we are going to discuss some common misconceptions about Ghanaian traditional religion. According to the latest census, Christianity or Christians in Ghana make up 71.2%, Muslims make up 17.6%, uh, and those of the traditional faith make up 6.2%. How do we treat each other? Those of the traditional faith are in the minority, but Ghanaians are originally of the traditional faith until the colonialists brought Christianity and Islam to the country. But what is the reaction of people towards those of the traditional faith? What are the common misconceptions? To help us with this discussion, we have in the studio Numo Blafo III. He is a communications professional, the PRO of Traditional Medicine Practice Council, and also a Ghan traditional priest. Numo, welcome. Thank you. So you are a traditional priest. I just want to know what's the difference between a Ghan traditional priest and the traditional priest of the Ashanti, of the Ewe, and as far as the Yoruba traditional priest? Thank you and thank you again. And let me say a good morning to your viewers. In fact, I wouldn't say there are so much differences between the Ghan traditional priests and the traditional priests of other jurisdictions within the country or even outside, but in Africa and beyond Africa. Um, they are all doing almost the same thing, but their positions might be a bit different. Because, for example, looking at Ashantis, in fact, before the Ashantis who even become Ashanti, it was a priest who actually made them what they are. That is a companionship. But they have their kings, and the priests are like under the kings. And then in Ghan, we have the Wulomo, who is the priest before the king or the chief. And then in other areas, most of it, in fact, looking at ancient civilizations, the priest had come before the king. Because, mm -hmm. for example, you look at Egypt. Egypt see their pharaoh as God on earth. Mm -hmm. They see him as God. And even going beyond Egypt, Iran, they see their, I mean, the Shah, when he was the Shah, the emperor then, they see him as also God or God's image on earth. And in fact, all other civilizations, yeah. in fact, if you go to, let's say, the Aztec, the, those in South America, the Maya civilizations, you have the priest king. Therefore, all I almost I always say is that this traditional religion was before any other religion. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, where certain religions had come up, for example, Christianity came from the Middle East. Where it came from, the people had their own religion, their own forms of worship before Christ came and propagated his own concept of how their religion should be, which now is Christianity. But even looking at Christianity from its onset till now, there has been a lot of changes. Yeah. Whether development or whatever, whether they've gone far or they've gone back, is uh, is something else to be debated on. So, Numo, which uh, jurisdiction do you occupy, and the community you serve? 
Um, I'm the Asene Romo, and Asene is a division of the Ghana State. Mm -hmm. And uh, my house is called Lomo Chokuna. Okay. When we talk about Lomo, Lomo means ruler or governor. Mm -hmm. And that is what we use as, or has been corrupted to Wulomo, Wolumo. Okay. It's corrupted now to Wulomo. Mm -hmm. The actual word is Wolumo. Okay. And because the guns believe that the Wulomo led them to our present uh, location before we begin to have chiefs and all that, the Wulomo was referred to as Wolumo. That is our governor, our ruler. Mm -hmm. And he, is, he played, a, I would say, a trad role. You know, he was the judge, he was the priest, and then he was the leader. Mm -hmm. So he was playing that triumvirate role as the priest, the judge, and then the leader. But then due to wars and all that, you know, we needed people to lead the Asafo to protect the community and its people. That's how come we began to have chiefs. Okay. So a lot of Ghanaians, I don't know uh, how you take it, but when they see traditional priests, because that's how I described you, they would use the term fetish priests because they are used to uh, hearing people say that in so many other religious uh, institutions. How do you see that kind of title? Is this something that you approve of? No, I don't approve of it because... First, what is fetish? I don't have a dictionary here, but then what I know about what is fetish is something that um, you, you cannot do without. Mm. In fact, your phone becomes fetish to you because you wake up early morning, you want to go into your phone, check your WhatsApp messages, check whether you have missed calls. In fact, you do that before you even go into wash your face or brush your teeth. Mm. It becomes fetish to you. You can see when you don't have your phone, how you feel. Something is going on. I mean, it's like that day, if you left it at home and you got to work, and maybe you have to drive like five miles or something to get to work, and you got to work before realizing that you don't have your phone, I think your productivity on that day will be very low. So when people say fetish, I always say that they don't know what they are mentioning because that is what we have been programmed by the colonialists to see our own heritage because the deities we worship when they will say angels by who created them they will say angels and our own are fetish paganism this 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 that but they have given nice names to their own, St. Anthony, St. John, St. This, St. That. Then when I call my own, Blafo, then they say, hey, something. But I'm not English. Mm. So there's no way I will have the English name in my name or in the naming of my ancestors and my deities. There's no way. Mm. So when you don't understand my mentioning Akroma, Akromabri, maybe which are my, some of my deities, then because you don't understand, then you begin to, I mean, look down what I'm doing. But then, you see, it is just something that I, I, I always say that we've been lost for a long time. We've been lost for a long time because Whatever we do as traditionalists, they are our heritage. In fact, you have a name. You don't even know where the name came from. And then you say you've converted to Christianity, but you still keep your name. Mm -hmm. Because it is your name that will identify you to a specific house, to a specific family. And then you'll be known. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that name, who are you? You are a lost person. You don't have an identity. So if you say you are converted to Christianity, I think, or Islam, for me, what I say is, you don't just change one name. Change all your names so that at least you don't even belong to any family. 
to any tradition at all. But you see, this research that has been done, I always doubt it because mm -hmm. how many Christians don't come to the shrine? How many Muslims don't come? That's a very important point you've made because my next question was going to be, how does one identify as a traditional religious believer? Is it by, uh, for Christianity, for instance, people convert and then they go through a process for Islam, it's the same, unless you are born in uh, the religion. But what about traditional African belief or traditional African religion? How does one belong? Well, it isn't something that you say, oh, from today I'm going to be this or that. You were born in it. Mm -hmm. So it is yourself. Nobody teaches anybody how to worship God. Mm -hmm. You see, you live it. Because from the day you were born, if you come to Ga custom, you were born on the eighth day, you will be named. And look at the ceremony or the rites that goes with the naming ceremony. Then people say it's, um, uh, they will use the usual word, it's fetish and it is this and it is that. How can you put a small baby on the ground and this and that? And I mean, but look at how it is done. When you are to be named, they look for somebody with integrity within the family or even the community. And that person will be asked to do or to lead that um, right. Meanwhile, you have your family head who is there to also guide the way things are conducted. But then they find this man with integrity. So because of what? Because they want you to grow, to be like him. You see, they want you, the uh, child, to grow, to be like that person. But now, we say because of Christianity, we are taking our children to churches. Meanwhile, we know the beginning of some of these pastors, some of these so-called bishops and reverends and whatever. Call, I mean, they have big, big titles. Some have been armed robbers. Some even became converted when they were in jail and all that. And today, I'm taking my child to this person. How do I want my child to grow up? Or who do I want my child to grow up to be? So if tomorrow my child has become a number of who caused it? But with the point you made about uh, Africans being born into their traditional beliefs and they grow in it, so it's by birth, does that mean uh, a Caucasian, a white man, or someone outside of Africa cannot accept and follow traditional African religion? Not so. Not that, like that. They also have their traditional religion, mm -hmm. which they were. I mean, they were worshiping before Christianity came. Mm -hmm. You see, because the Caucasians, in fact, if you go to Britain, like this, England, for example, they have these druids, those who constructed the. Um, how do I call it? Oh, sh I've forgotten the name, but then it's all over the place. I mean, they have their own form of traditional worship before Christianity came. But you see, some of them, because of wars, because most of the time they were fighting all over Europe, they were moving from one place to another. So they lost their, um, how do I put it, they lost their touch to where they were born, the things they were doing there and all. You understand? So and I think a lot of them have lost it. They lost but it. we see some of them coming to Ghana and other countries, and they come to your houses, yeah. and then they come to learn how you play your drums, yeah. how you worship, and everything. And others ad adopt it. Yeah. When they adopt it, is it accepted? Are they also uh, followers of the religion, or you see them as just people trying to learn and adapt? Well... It, 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 it depends on the person's own posture. Mm. Because there are those who only come to learn. And there are those who, who really want to live it. You see, that's what I'm saying. Traditional religion is not about practice. It's not about following. Mm. It's about your life. Because okay. there are simple, simple things that you do. You, you, you get me? Which people don't understand or they don't see the essence. Because mm. whatever you gain cannot be measured. Yeah. But 
for somebody to say that um, I want to adapt this religion. You don't adapt religion, except the religions that were brought to you. It's what you learn how to be a Christian, you learn how to be a Muslim. But the traditional religion, I don't see what you are to, you need to learn. So there's no book that you could follow to learn how to do certain things? I haven't things. seen any book okay. up to today. So it's natural. it's natural? You just have to follow what others are doing? And not just follow what others are doing, but your natural instincts. What does it tell you? Because, for example, you know killing is not good. Taking the life of another person. Taking somebody's, um, something that doesn't belong to you. It's not good, you know, naturally. Mm -hmm. So what again do you need? Do you need somebody to come and tell you that, look, if you go and follow somebody's wife, it's bad? You yourself, don't you know? So these are natural things that you don't need anybody to tell you. You don't need anybody to even remind you that, look, when you do good, your name remains forever. Because people who have done or I would say they pay their dues, you know, in the family. You hear people naming their children after these people. Because that's how come we say you live forever. Not that you will live forever, but your name, that will be referred to you after even you are dead. Somebody will name his or a child after you. They keep the name evolving. They keep the name alive. That's how come you are living forever. For example, look at Kwame Nkrumah till today. Though he died many years ago, but till today. They mention his name as if the person is still alive. So do I need somebody to come and tell me when I do good, I'll go to heaven? Okay, where is that heaven? Has somebody come from there to tell me that, yes, I was in heaven and this is how the place is. Look at how many... Um, space probes they've sent into outer space. Has anybody come back to report that you saw a community of very pure holy people or even angels or God or whatever? Everything you do, you have your um, reward, either good or bad. You have it here. Mm. Yeah. Let's now talk about the common misconceptions of the traditional African religions. And I want us to start from birth to death. So from birth, uh, as you uh, highlighted, some birth rites that are done and people are born and naturally uh, they are of the traditional religion. However, they later convert to be uh, part of any other re the other religions that we have. From birth, uh, we see children taken through some rites, like um, I know some communities where they throw water in the sky or on roofs, it falls on the baby, and others, they dip fingers into uh, I mean, it is drinks. All part of it's the, all part uh, of the naming ceremony. Yes. Because early morning, the baby will be brought from the mother's side. Mm. After all, it's the mother will give birth to the baby. And most of the time, when you give birth, you don't stay with your husband. In fact, prior to giving birth, at a point in the pregnancy, you move to your mother's side yeah and then when you give birth then on the eighth day in fact when you give birth the mother your mother's family will come and inform the man's family that oh, your daughter or our daughter because marriage is about the company combining two families so our daughter has given birth to oh, male or female fine but this, this is a gang this tradition is a gang tradition okay I'm talking about then on the eighth day they will, they will send from the man's family to go and bring the baby. So some of the woman's family will also follow. They bring the baby to the man's family house. Maybe if the man has his own house, right, they won't do it. Either his father's house or the grandfather's house or the family house. That's where they have to do the naming ceremony. Mm. So it is the gathering of both families, the mother's side, and then that is the, the mother of the baby, and then the father of the baby. So these two families come. They will choose a leader from the mother's end, they will choose a leader from the father's end. 
and then some processes begin. From the father's end, because it is their house, they will first pour the libation. Mm. You see, first they will do the household. That one they can use any, um, like, uh, gin or schnapps or anything. And then they will come to the rites itself, where they use what we call medan or corn, um, corn wine. Then they start with Agu Chemeke, and that is like opening mm. um, statement. Agu Chemeke, Menashine, that is what is today. So if today is Wednesday, is it Menashi Show, Nima Show, Nama Show? You understand? So they mention that. Then they come to what we call the blessing or Jomo. I've forgotten most, but maybe I can say a little. Okay. Okay. Tra, tra, tra. Umanyaba. Yeah. When we ask of, we say umanyaba. Then we say, oh, let there be blessing. Then there yeah, is let it be. You see. And there's a perception here, in terms of, uh, I mean, the prayers that's done for the baby. So people think that some spirits. And normally they say evil spirits are being invoked to take over the baby's life. Is that <laughs> truthful? Is that what happens? Whatever is said, you don't even hear of any deity being mentioned. Mm. It's all about blessing and direction. Because when we say, before any barney, that is, this child should come and respect the world. Mm. A year to a fang is said to that is his front should be bright, mm -hmm. but what is behind him should be in the dark. You see, so there's no spirit coming to take no, over no, the baby. No, 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 it's just <laughs> blessing because I know a lot of people have stopped doing the traditional birth rites. I mean, the, the naming that, that ceremony is just what I said mm. that people will now prefer to take their children to churches. For a pastor to go and lay his hands on this baby. Meanwhile, we know the past of some of these pastors and reverends and bishops and whatever. Some of them got converted in jail. What sent them to jail? What sent those people to jail? Some we know um, are pure arm robbers. Serious arm robbers. And then you send your child to this person to lay his hand on the child. What do you think the child will grow up to be? Because whatever we do in the tradition is we just asking for blessing for the child. We even go as far as telling the child that look, when you dip your hand into water and you touch the child's tank, you tell him that look, this is water. Then you dip your hand into gin or uh, gin or schnapp. Or Akpeteshikura, you touch the child's tongue. You say, This is done. When he sees A, he should say it is A. When he sees B, he should say it is B. So that's the meaning. That's the meaning. And not that you are teaching the child how to drink, because that's also another uh, perception out there. the child how to drink water, <laughs> is it bad? <laughs> and teaching him also how to drink uh, snap, is it bad? Because at that point, mm. if that is what it is meant, then the child can decide which of the uh, liquids he will like or she will like, whether she will go the snap way or she will go the water or he will go the water way. Mm. It is for him to decide. But then this, we are just telling the child that, look, if you see white, say it is white. If you see black, say it is black. Like that is, you came with black hair and we are asking you go with gray or white hair. Is it anything bad? This is very interesting and uh, we'll go on a break, short one. We'll be right back and then we'll discuss the other common misconceptions about our traditional religion. Our guest is Numo Blafo the third. This is the lowdown. We'll be right back.
Welcome back from the break. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe, and our guest is Numo Blafo III. He's a communication professional. He's also the PRO of the Traditional Medicine Practice Council. So, Numo, you told us about uh, the naming ceremony that's done traditionally and its importance. Now, uh, when the child grows up, we normally see in the Ga community where a lot of activities go on, cultural activities, traditional activities, and you see children involved in these activities. Now, are these uh, part of the structures, the education structures, traditionally, to get children to understand the culture, like we see the twins coming out during the Omoa festivities, most of them are children and even elderly, and we see children being involved in other things as well. So, uh, what is the traditional way of education? Um, it's practical. Okay. Because there is no book, as you said. So, there's no theory side about it. Okay. It's just practical. So, if, for example, as I'm a Wulom, you know, it's only that now, it isn't like before when there weren't these, I mean, schools and churches and all that. So, whatever I am doing, my children will have to be involved. Okay. But today, they also have their choice. Oh, so and your children I, have a choice? Of course. Hmm. Of course. I can't force them. I can't impose it on them. Hmm. But then, they are seeing me in it. They have their choice. If at one day they will also like to come back, I will not uh, stop them. But you see, it is practical. It is, it is something that you live it. So in living it, that is where you learn how things are done. Because having lived in a family house for some time, I saw many things being done. For example, um, how when uh, someone gives birth, my grandma will go, come back with, they say, meaning like, you know, when you give birth, they say something else comes out. The placenta. Then like everything. Yeah. And then she wants me to dig a, a particular place and bury it. So that I know it's been done before, but currently I don't know yeah. whether it is done. Now, when the child, the baby, you know, some babies, when they are born, they will start to, as if, I don't know how to put it, but if you put them down, they won't lie straight. They will like turning themselves, I mean, then there is this, um, you, she will go and buy this um, chameleon bones, dried one. Mm. Then she will tie it in a white cloth, small piece of cloth, put it in the water that she will use to bath the baby. And then later on, she will just dip some to the child's mouth. And the child will stop all those things. But today, I don't know whether people still know about this. You understand? There's a lot. And then growing up in a community where, like in the indigenous Ghana community, where everything you see, um, everything that has been done. For example, this um, ban on drumming and noise speaking, the ceremonies that we went through. We would. But in the olden days, when they are coming, they say, I go. They say, you have to hide. Mm. Or even if you are on the road and there's a wall, then you need to go and just... Um, I mean, stay by the wall because we don't, you don't have to meet them. But today, in fact, when you are saying Ago, then people are rather coming out to come and see what exactly we are doing or what, where we are going. So those have been some of the changes. But we have this, um, as you are growing up, we have what we call this passage of rights. Yeah. You understand? For, not for all the gang people to but we have specific, a specific house in Ga area that is mine here. And they do for their girl uh, child before as an adolescent or before, even if you are a small, I mean, child and the parents can do, they do it for you. So it's not only the Krobos who do it. Yeah. Gans also a, yeah, yeah. a We have group. A, a specific house who, who okay. do yeah. And they also do it for, and you see, we say we don't believe it. Yeah. Like this uh, depot and all that. We say we don't believe them. But they work. Yeah. Because this, you will see elderly women 
Eh? They say, ah, my marriage, nothing is working. In fact, my business, unless they say, unless I come and do this thing. And they will come and do it before they become free. Mm -hmm. And look at the promiscuity we now have in our system, on the society. But before, if you are a lady and you know you've not gone through that process, you cannot be with a man. And before too, I realized, not that I, I saw, when maybe, uh, especially girls are exchanging words with guys. But today, oh sure, they can't go now, go for for fun. You see, in fact, they are even showing their breasts. So can a lady ask a guy whether he has seen his ties before? Because they are wearing short things, and I mean, you are exposing every part of your body. So earlier you mentioned choice, mm -hmm. and you said your children have the choice to choose whether to be uh, Wulomo or any other. But I know uh, that with the Wulomo, is a calling. That's what I've been told. Yeah. That is a calling. Do you have a choice to refuse that call? Yes, but you said something, whether my children will mm. love to be yes. Wulomo. No, Wulomo is an inheritance, but okay. it is not from father to son. Okay, but it's an inheritance. It's an inheritance. Okay. Because, for example, in my house, we have three gates, mm. and it rotates among these gates. Okay. So we are the third to occupy the two. That's why I'm no more black for the mm. third. There have been those ahead of me. But my child will not be a Wulom. Okay. What I'm saying is that my child can decide to, I mean, follow whatever I'm doing and not go to church. Mm. And he can also go to church and even not follow what I'm doing. Okay. I will not force him or her. Mm. That's just what I meant, mm. that he has a choice. But not that when I'm not there, he can be a Wulom. Okay. And in fact, if it, if it is um, the turn of that gate, you know, there are some that are called, mm -hmm. but there are some that people sit and then elders sit and decide on who to be. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways of getting a woman. For example, my own, I would say it's a calling. Okay. Because the house that I was installed at, one, I didn't know there. Two, I haven't been there. Three, my first time of going there was when I was installed. And I went there voluntarily. Mm. Nobody forced me there. But because I had some business which was failing, and I told an uncle that, oh, this is what my conditions are. And he said, oh, you buy a drink, add some money, take it to your house. Where is the house? He went to show me the house. And that is why I'm sitting down as a Wulomo today. So the day you got there, that was the day, that was the day we were waiting for you to come, actually. Actually, that's what they said. <laughs> no. Because the thing, like I was here, and some priestesses from the other street got possessed. And they came, told the elders in the house that, look, the person you are looking for, you see. I didn't hear their communication. But that is all I can imagine that. That's how I concluded. Mm -hmm. that, yes, that was what they were saying. Okay. Uh, then things started moving up and down, and all of a sudden, they just cut the round, put the blood on me, and a new, a new. That mm. is it. And what's the significance of the blood? Yes, you see, it is like the pouring of oil by somewhere on David's head, anointing. You see. They anoint you so that at that moment you know that no, you are not who you were. Okay. Because for a whole brown to be cut and the blood to be put on you it, it is something very, very significant. Mm -hmm. Because they don't do it for everybody. So why are you alone? Mm -hmm. But in so, your time of, I mean, since you became a Wulomo, have you ever encountered somebody who went through the process but still decided not to be a Wulomo. Is this something that someone um, can, can do? I heard of someone who did that. He didn't end up well with him. In fact, I saw him, they showed me. 
he's now a Muslim. I don't know whether he's passed on or not. Mm -hmm. But they said he was supposed to be um, Wulom or um, for Sakumo Wulom. Okay. And then he was in confinement when he himself ran away. Mm. It didn't go well with him till I don't know whether he's passed on. Okay. And I've heard of others too. Mm. And in fact, when it happened to me, I had wanted to escape. But it became very difficult. I couldn't. The so, deities were still holding you on. Oh, my people, I had friends who would come to assist me to escape, but then mm. the car would decide to sit in. And one old man in the house, before I realized this, in the car. <laughs> <laughs> it happened about three times, and I mm. said, in fact, I got angry at the end with him. I, I spoke to him, and he, but he was laughing. <laughs> you see, so I just decided that oh, let it be. Mm. So but your life has become better? At after. least after. Okay. Things have changed because currently, where I am today, I never knew. I will be in this position, mm -hmm. being a member of the governing board of the National Peace Council. It's another position that I never knew I would be. And in fact, where I was before, who am I to even be shaking presidents? Mm -hmm. Where will I stand to shake a president or even take a picture with a president? Mm -hmm. But today, I have that privilege of meeting a president former, either former or present, shaking them and all that. So I have come far. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the education process, I know there's education involved. After you were selected to be the Wulomo, you go through some education on identifying the deities, understanding the, the practices and the things that you are supposed to do. Is there a school? Because uh, I've been told, but I'm not sure, that there's a school around Amasaman also. School. School for Ulomo and uh, I mean, there's nothing like that? There is nothing. Because I never went to any Ulomo school. You didn't go to any school? And I haven't seen any Ulomo going to a Ulomo school. Mm. You, you see, there are people bef who you come to meet. Mm. So definitely, if you are also wise, they will be showing you, they will be telling you, you have to do this. For example, when I was in school, after my confinement and outdoor, uh, in fact, during my confinement, I was people would come or elders. I would say, oh, "When you have, you are out, this and this are the things you have to be doing every week. Maybe my latest day is Tuesday, so every Tuesday morning you have to wake up early, bath, you come and pray here, you do this before praying, and you know because the latest day is Tuesday, Monday evening till Tuesday morning you don't have to be with the woman." Okay. You have to leave alone so that you come and do this. And then Fridays, Sundays, the, you know, Astra is a very big division. Yeah. And it has so many deities. Even if you look at the performance of these rites to place the ban on drumming and noise making, they all come from Astra. Except, I would say, just to Nai and Bisafi, yeah. but Kole, Sakumo, Dantu, Gua. Naide, all of them are from Asami. You see. So there were certain houses, for example, which didn't have Wulomo, and up to now too, they don't have a Wulomo. And I'm supposed to stand in as a Wulomo to perform whatever rites they do there. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Because if if Charles I go, the elders would tell me what the Wulomo was supposed to do. Okay. So I have to follow their instructions and mm. do it. To the extent that there was a time when the then Kole Wulomo, there has been an injunction placed on him. So I had to go to that Kole Wulomo to perform the rites for mm. them. And then at a point, I was performing the rites at Naiwe because it was then the Naiwe Wulomo, Numotete Dited, who actually consecrated and performed all my rites. Okay. So, and he's an elderly man, so when I started going to the house, I was performing all the rites until he passed on. I was still doing it before we installed mm. another Wulom yeah. to come and take over. Currently, I'm performing the same for Sakumo, mm. but Sakumo is actually from Asen, and Sakumo is said to have been brought by my ancestor. 
So I go there as an owner. I don't go there as going to maybe because they need me. That's no, no, no. no. Mm. Yeah. So there's no school, but the others will be teaching you what you're supposed to do, what you are not supposed to do, the taboos and all that. And then um, I think that is that. Then you too, as a person, you also have your eyes, you have brains. At least you should also be seeing what, if you do, will be good for you if you, you, you decide not to do it. You know, and then there are things that you're supposed to do. If you don't do, oh, immediately, you get science. So the science yeah. may be bad? Yeah, you get science. It may mm. not be so bad, but there might be warnings. Okay. So that you straighten yourself. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So the God deities, did the ancestors come with them? And how did they come up? Like the the Kole, the Sakumo, and all, all of that. Sakumo. That's what I wouldn't know how they came by. But for Sakumo, which is written about, I mean, it's all over the place. It said that my ancestor was a fisherman, okay. and he was casting his nets in the Densu estuary. And then a stone came into the net, or something. Um, I mean. How they, something terrible came into the net. He threw it away, went to another part, cast the net. The same thing came in. He threw it away again, went to another place in the same uh, river, mm. cast the net. The same thing came back. So he decided to bring it home, to come and ask, uh, what is it that it is worrying him, that it is coming into his net instead of fishes that he came for? And so when they asked, they say, oh, the deity identified itself as Sakumo, mm -hmm. but that it has come to help the Ghana people in their wars. So in that case, he brought it. Therefore, they say he became the first prophet. He didn't become the Wulomo for okay. the Sakumo, but he mm -hmm. became the first prophet of Sakumo. Okay. And it was located at Lumochokuna, where I am a Wulomo today. Mm. And then along the line, I think when he passed on, they wanted another person to take over from. But then the deity said no. It didn't come for royals to serve him. So it was given to another house. And then I don't know whether, because you see it's a play mm. court. And so they gave it to another play people. Then they say he started to kill them. Therefore, to ha they had to take money. That time, his cowries they use as money to go and buy a human being to come and save the Sakumo. And it is history. It is, it is written. It isn't something that, although I was told, but I found it in books like mm -hmm. the, um, the priests, kings and kinsmen by, a a a by I think Eyama or something. And then this book to the Gans of Ghana, a history of a West African people by Henderson Kote. Mm. It is also there. And even J is it J Watts or they all have it in their books. So it isn't something that is being is con mm. conducted. And even to the extent that there was a hearing at the Ghana Traditional Council, I think in the seventies. And then one of the witnesses from Abola, not even from Asene, mm. also said the same thing. So it isn't something that maybe we are telling some story by something that has been written or recorded. And therefore, they bought this human being to come and say, and that is how the Sakumo has been. So before, it is even revealed so much that people were even afraid to pass where it is located. Mm. And because of it, um, I mean, how it is, they had to relocate it to the outskirts of the then known town of Ghana. Because it was, they say it was so, I mean, it doesn't play, it doesn't joke, and it, yeah. it isn't something a deity or God who is forgiving. If you make a mistake, that is the end of you. Mm. It, it was feared. So currently, we have a lot of um, people who parade as priests and they claim they have deities, but you can't tell which 
uh, I mean, which uh, tribe or which clan they come from. And you see them on TV and saying all sorts of things. Are they, uh, I mean, recognized by, let's say, the Ghana traditional uh, um, I don't see. I don't think you've seen a guy doing mm. that. No. Yes. Because most of those people you see are, um, what they are using are things they have come to acquire. Mm. They are not ancestral deities. You see, we have ancestral deities. And then we have those that are people who have gone some places and they have acquired. You understand? Like during the time of wars, people go to war, the people go to acquire certain uh, powers so that when they go to war, they can return or they can be victorious and all that. So some of them that you see on TV are things that they themselves have come to acquire or maybe their fathers or grandfathers or great-grandfathers went to acquire and they are using it this way. Now but they, ancestral yeah. worship okay. is different from what they are doing. Mm. Because the ancestral worship is about the protection of the community, the people. It's about how the people will survive and prosper, progress. You see, that is it. Because those people, we've heard, I mean, some have been arrested for asking people to bring babies and heads and all of that. It's, <laughs> is it a worry? <laughs> it's a big worry because... But you see, it is also about the society we are living in now. People, everybody wants to get rich. Everybody wants to be rich without doing anything. How? But still, I don't believe in those things that you take a human being. Maybe you go and sell the parts and they give you money. So instantly you are rich. <laughs> but I don't think they can do something for you and then there will be a box where every day you just go and collect money from. Where does that money come from? Is that person, um, does he have the money cutting machine? Or is he from Bank of Ghana? Or is that why some of our banks are failed? They stole their monies from there spiritually. You see, it comes up with a lot of questions. But I don't think that somebody can do something for you. Then there's a box or some room, as we see on TV, where you always go and then there's this money, then you will go and pick and go and, I mean, no, without doing any work. So the Wulomos don't charm money. No, 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 no. You don't, but you, people can come to you for direction? Oh, for and, direction. Maybe, yes. oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this business, maybe family matter or all. It is only prayer I will offer for you. Okay. And maybe if there are certain directions I can give you, mm. I will advise. Yeah. And if there is a need for something to be performed for you, I will do for you. But mm. can you use a human being? For what? Would, would it be right for, uh, I mean, uh, the Wulomos of Accra, let's assume Accra, Greater Accra, to write a press statement and say they are calling uh, against the works of these people who are tarnishing the image of the traditional religion because they font as traditional uh, religious people? Mm, but they say there's freedom of worship. Freedom of worship. So how can I go and say that you, the way you are worshipping is bad, so stop. Already, me, myself, I'm being attacked because I have placed the ban on drumming and noise making. And people are saying, why? They are attacking the gun people left, right, center. Meanwhile, there is no place in Ghana here where they don't have their cultural tradition, where they don't have certain things they do. Meanwhile, I mean, the ban on drumming and noise making, it's not only done in gun communities. I've cited this example over and over and many, many more. Because when you go to, I think I shall be possible or somewhere, at a point when they want to celebrate their own festival, they also place a ban on drumming and noise making. You go to Akwamu, before they celebrate Dojura, they also place a ban on drumming and noise making. You go to Elimina, before the Bakatui festival, they also place a ban on drumming and, and even a ban on fishing in the Bakatui lake or river mm. or lagoon or whatever and many, many other others. So why is it that when it gets to the guns own, then people are up in arms? You have the whole year, 11 months, to do what you want to do. Just one month for silence, and then you don't agree. Meanwhile, the um, 
other religions also had their own because before the Ramadan for the Muslims, where they also observe some kind of silence and fasting and praying, the Christians also said, I mean, observed their Lent season where they also fasted. And if you are fasting, do you go jumping all over the place? Mm. You see. And during the same period, but you see, there is something we need to understand that it is this same period too that people, especially farmers, should be concentrating or are concentrating on their farming activities like clearing the land and doing their planting and all that. And the ban on drumming and noise making is just um, a symbolism of farming activity. Because what we do, we don't do anything that having specific places for particular houses who we'll go, they clear their space, and then a week later, they go and plant millet and corn. Then a month later, they go, in fact, it's not even about a month, about three weeks later, they go and transplant. You see, but the whole process takes one month mm. to leave the barn. And it is just farming activities. And people are putting all kinds of meanings into it. Mm. You see, but what is there is, as a human being, there should come a time when you need to do something that will take you nearer to your God. Because after all, you didn't come to this world by yourself and you didn't come by accident. You came by a purpose and for a purpose. Therefore, we all believe that there is something beyond the human uh, I mean, understanding. So if there's something beyond human understanding and some people are professing a way or a direction as to how to get closer to that being whom we all know, that everything flows from him or her. We guys, or uh, Ashanti also say Asasiya, but we guys, we, we say Atananyum. Ashanti will say maybe Onyankupon or Chediampon. But we say Chediampon, Kwame, Asasiya Fia, that is for the Ga people. Mm. But when we are referring to God, we say Atananyum. So Gans believe in divinity, the God, the one God. The one God, but yeah. one God in, uh, in two persons, mm. the male, female, okay. combined, mm. not that different people. We'll but talk more about God after this break. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. This is the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe and our guest is Numo Blafo III. And we are discussing African or Ghanaian traditional religion and some common misconceptions. And so far you've told us a lot of things that are very important. And traditional religion or, I mean, traditional religion believes in the concept of God. And you are saying the Ghans have or believe in both the male and female God in one. And we hear it in a lot of the prayers and then the rituals that are performed. So um, we see other people also worshipping other deities. But where do they fall when it comes to uh, the hierarchy of, uh, the, I mean, of God, if there's anything like that? Yeah. We can say atan animo. That is, we are referring to God. Mm -hmm. But then we have the deities who some people will say they are angels. Okay. Because definitely, God doesn't work alone. He has his servants. Mm -hmm. And you see, depending on where you find yourself, mm -hmm. then you will see certain things or deities there, which are different, or there are some that run through all the Ghana communities. There are some you may find them in Teshi, La, and maybe Nungwa. There are some you might find in Nungwa, Tema. There are some you will find all over the place. But I mean, the deities are not, uh, uh, I mean, things that you can touch. They are just uh, 
beliefs. They are beliefs. So they are not things that you can find somewhere and you can no, see it's them. just maybe a symbol of a, a place somewhere where you can how do I point of contact. That's okay. what I would say. Okay. But you come and you don't find anything. Okay. You understand? So it's not like there's a statue because normally there's this belief that there are statues that represent the deities and people think that is the deity. There are some that even are not statues. Mm. You see, there are some that are not empty air. Mm. But you believe this is where it is located or this is where when you call it will come. But though you can call it anywhere and it, it will come. Mm. You see. So th those who are possessed during rituals and other uh, events, what, what is it? Is it, are they also Wulomo or what, what are they? No, they are priestesses. Okay. You see, most of the time they are possessed by the deities and then they speak. Mm. The deities speak through them. Okay. Because maybe the deity has a message. Mm. So they will have to possess somebody and then so that they can hear what people can hear what it wants to say. Do they possess the particular people or it's just... And they really? don't possess everybody too. Okay. At least you've not been possessed before. So if you stand <laughs> by, by the, the event, you don't, you no, don't no, have no, the, no, there's there's no happens. chance of you being possessed. Because, I mean, except you yourself, maybe someone, one is following you mm. and then you don't go home, you don't go and do what you have to do at in your house. But when people are doing it, you run to go and watch. So, uh, okay, you want to go and watch some people. Okay, we also do for you so that they will go and come and watch you too. You see, but then it isn't something that, um, like, because your mother was or your grandmother was, so definitely you also be, you know. Mm. It isn't like that. And then the dancing and, and all of that. For those ones, you go through training. Okay. You go through training. And the training you are giving to somebody. Mm. For example, if, um, like me, I was possessed by a deity, one, they will have to find out which deity and from which house. So when they find out, then I will go through the process of being marked and then later on I will be, how do I call it, is it initiated okay. and then handed over to a senior person who would then take me through um, the process of learning how to dance, the songs, and so many things that goes with it. With the deity? With the deity. So all the songs, the dances, they're all for a deity? They're all for a deity. But actually, there are different ones too, because okay. you need to know many, as mm -hmm. many as you can. Because you'll be going to um, maybe functions, mm -hmm. Because if, for example, I'm celebrating my Yam festival, other priestesses will come with their initiates and all, but they might not be the same as my own. Okay. You understand? But you need to learn anything you can learn about, about it, so that wherever you go, you are not found wanting. Mm. Because even the dancing are specific to certain deities. Okay. Because there is a deity when it comes they need to sing a certain song, play the kind of um, band for or drums for it, and it has its own dance. Mm. So as an initiate, you need to learn anything you can learn about so that wherever you go, whatever is being done, you can also do some. Okay, so the, the dance, the prayers, the incantations and everything, are they done in full consciousness or they are done in, um, I mean while you've been possessed how, how does it work so there are two ways one can be when you are not even possessed mm. that's why you need to learn okay so that even in the physical form mm. without being possessed you can still sing and dance mm. when you get possessed too it's a different thing altogether you don't control yourself no that one you are not in control of yourself okay. mm. it's the deity that is controlling you but yet when they uh, mention a specific song, you know the dance that goes with it. Mm. And those who play the drums to know the type of drum or how they will play the drum for you to dance. Okay. So it's a, it's, that is where you learn, mm. where it is like 
not a formal school, but it's, it's practical. No theory. Everything is practical. Okay. When you go to a function, you see how people are doing. They, they will push you. You to go. Even if you don't know how to dance, you will be there. Suppose what then they will be teaching you. Oh, do this, do that. You have to do it like this two, three times, four times, five times before you realize you are also doing the same mm -hmm. thing. So as a leader of the traditional religion, uh, do you have rules and regulations? You've mentioned some to us, days that you pray and then some things you do on Fridays, Sundays and all of that. But, uh, I mean, the appearance and also even work and other things like that in this secular environment, are there limitations or you can do anything anyhow or anyhow, anywhere, anytime you want to? You can't do anything. Mm. You can't do anything and anyhow. So you can't be a banker? Being a PRO, I can be a banker if I've chosen that okay. route. Uh, so, in fact, it was my choice to go to school after being coming a Wolom. Okay. And I wasn't stopped, though. Because after all, I've been, uh, I have a little education and looking at me, sitting at home, doing nothing, I realized I would go waste. And I also, who is going to take care of me and my family? You know? Yeah, there's no traditional system that pays? There is a system that okay. should be taking care of me. But people there refused yeah. to do what they have to do. So I have to find a way to keep body and soul together. Yeah. And that's how I kind of found myself in school. And yeah, I am. Okay. Mm. So, so the white? That's my dressing actually for the wulom. Okay. Uh, it's compulsory. compulsory. It has to be white. It has to be white. Or even, even if there should be colors, it should be white based. Okay. Yeah. And then no uh, shoes? No shoes, yes. Because the wulomo is supposed to be living in a holy place. Okay. That is the bachu. Mm. So even before you enter that place, there is something there at the gate we call akrabacha. When you get there, you have to remove your footwear before you enter that place. Okay. And you see, some of these things, sometimes I, I find it interesting. Because you will find a lot of these things in the Old Testament. Because it says somewhere, either in Exodus or where Moses, when he wants to speak to God, he goes outside their camp and then sets up a tent of meeting. That is where he calls God and speaks to him. And that is where what we also refer to as Bachu. Because that is where the deity is suspected or supposed to be resided, or where when you call it, it will come. Are these the, the, the uh, I mean, demarcated places we see? Yes. Which are painted in white with yes. the curtain? Yes. OK. But mo mo mostly there are plants in there too. There are plants there to give shade. To Sometimes shade, okay. there are herbal uh, plants okay. and all that, yeah. you see. And then when you look at we walking barefooted, say Moses, when he was called, mm. was told to remove his slippers because the ground on which he's standing is a holy ground. Mm. So I don't know whether we learned it from there. But I don't think so because before the Bible will come, we were already practicing all these things. Mm. So where did it come from? And the hairstyle? Mm, my hair is just covered. Okay. Yeah, there's and no I, style to it. Okay, so you're not supposed to cut your hair at all, or that is not... Mm, uh, I'm not supposed to. Okay. I'm not supposed to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's close to the Rastafarians, I mean... Maybe, but it's not Rasta too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. You want to see it. <laughs> but I cannot... Uh, I mean, you uncover my hair in public. That okay. Is it. Okay. But at home, mm. alone, in my room, yeah. I do remove my hair. Okay. So, final question. Let's focus on the Gan traditional religion and also the whole Gan community now. The Gan community is becoming bigger in terms of population. So, you can see that people have over, overgrown or outgrown all these centers of traditional uh, activities and all of that. Is there any possibility of moving the deities away from the communities because of the population growth? Or is there anything that could be done? Because I see sometimes, even recently, 
uh, during the activities to uh, plant the corn, you can see that there was no space, as you said. You are moving people, they are not moving. And there are, there are so many of them. Is this something that can be done about it? <clears throat> I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure we can do anything about it because um, they relate to each other. Mm. So the moment you move one, it's like a, how do I put it, a brick wall. If you move one, the rest will fall. So, and I, I don't know. You see, these are our ancestors to, I don't know. But they have this system where they've put so many things in place mm. and they follow one after the other. And you move from here, you have to move to this house before you proceed to another. Okay. If you don't pass there, then it's sacrilege. Mm. So if you move one out of there, do we have to go to wherever it has been relocated to before coming back to our roots? So I don't think that can be done. Unless you move the whole gang community to another location, which is impossible. It's impossible. So finally, your final words, I mean, is there any future, do you see any brighter future for the African traditional religion? Oh yeah, because currently I know a lot of people are trying to, um, how do I put it, um, they are trying to link up with their past, their roots and all that. And I know a lot of people who come, oh, there is, say there is this, there is that in my house, but because people are not doing anything about it or we are not, so the house is not mm -hmm. prospering. We the children or we the youth or we the whatever, men, I mean women have a lot of challenges. What can we do and all that? And I don't know why, but you see, it isn't our fault too. That is the situation we find ourselves in. And we've been programmed to the extent that we hate our own, but love those of others. And that is where we are getting a lot of issues. So what I would say is that, look, we are Ghanaians and every human being or every Ghanaian came from a particular house. And that house, you don't know what it was built on or what was used to build the house and even to protect that house and the family and to make them prosper some time ago. But we say we've converted to Christianity or Islam, so whatever is in the house, we are not interested. We won't go, we won't do what we're supposed to do. But then, the properties that were used, I mean, that the deities were used to acquire, that one day we will go to court. <laughs> we will fight tooth and nail yeah. to possess them. Mm. But what was used to acquire that property, we forsaken those ones. And would, do, would they be happy? In fact, if it were to be you. So all I'm saying is that we should look within and we are bigger than the way we see ourselves. Unless we will identify what is in us and what is for us and do what we're supposed to do. Thank you very much, Numo Blafo the third. And Numo Blafo is the uh, I mean a traditional priest of the Ga, Asre to be precise. He is also the PRO of the traditional medicine practice uh, traditional medicine practice, practice council. council. Uh, it's under the Ministry of Health. It's under the Ministry of Health. Yeah, we regulate those into herbal medicine, manufacturing, mm -hmm. like the, those, and even alternative medicine, like the, those who do homeopathic okay. and all those kind of, mm. yeah. Okay, so this has been a very interesting uh, episode of The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe. Watch us every Monday on all of Ghana Web's digital channels. We'll be right back next week. Be safe. Mm -hmm.